Predators often set traps for their victims. Rather than aggressively stalking them, they just set themselves up in situations where a potential victim wants to be <clears throat> or doing something that the potential victim wants to do. Um, they use some of the same techniques and strategies that hunters, trappers, and sometimes soldiers use. So there are things you can do to keep yourself out of harm's way, to avoid these vulnerable situations. So I'm going to talk about these and I'm going to talk about tips to keep you out of those problems. So first, I want you to like this video and I want you to share this video if you can. And I want you to post a comment. I want you to tell me a situation that maybe you stayed out of or a situation you got stuck in um, where maybe you didn't think you could get out. Um, things like that or times when just intuition saved your butt. The more that you comment and share and like, just give a thumbs up, um, the more you do that to this video, the broader audience YouTube is going to send it to, and that'll help more people. So the first one is the fake emergency. Now, I know you've all heard of this and probably seen it on movies, but it happens in real life. Um, this is where a person comes up to your door <clears throat> at night middle of the night maybe it's storming out that's a good one when it's storming out or a blizzard and they come and they say i've wrecked my car or i've had an accident or my car stopped running or something can i please use your phone okay no <laughs> i'm sorry the strategy for this is no do not open your door um Maintain your area denial. That is your space. This is your haven. And you don't know this person. This might be a kindly old lady. It might be a, a young lady with children or carrying a baby or something like that. The thing is, you don't know this person and you don't know what's going to happen to you when you open that door. You don't know who else is there. Um, so what you can do, you can offer... Uh, I, you know, you've had an accident. I'm going to call the police. I'm willing to call the police for you. Um, I'm sorry, I can't help you, but I can call the police and they'll be right here. Something like that. Um, you can actually call a neighbor if you, you know, that's somebody that wants to come out and meet this person and help them. But you have no obligation to help these people. And you have really an obligation to yourself and your family to keep potentially dangerous people out of your home. Okay, now the second one is the roadside breakdown in an ominous location. I see this and I don't know that they're ominous or that they're, uh, that they're traps, but I do know that I'm not stopping out in the middle, sorry, mosquitoes. I'm not gonna stop out in the middle of a dark highway to help somebody in the middle of just a very remote area or something like that or some some uh, off-ramp or something that I some place I do not want to be out of my car you are zero percent chance of getting yourself in a trap going 70 miles an hour down the highway once you stop that car and you stop to help this person I don't care if it's I don't care if it's a female that looks very innocent and she may be I'm not saying that all these people are bad, but there, there's always a chance. Now, once again, I would suggest that you call the police. Say there's a woman broke down here at this location after this mile marker or after this off ramp. And she it's a bad area or doesn't look safe. And maybe she needs help. They can dispatch roadside assist or they can go it's not your problem. Once again, you do not owe these people anything. You can't put yourself at risk for that. So just let the police handle it. Um, third one, hitchhikers. This one is crazy. Right? It boggles my mind that people still pick up hitchhikers. Don't do it. Don't pick them up. I don't care if they're a young female that doesn't look like she belongs there. She may not be the only person there. 
the second you stop your car and you've unlocked the door so she can get in, guess what? Everybody else can get in too. And those two guys or three guys or whatever, maybe even from the other side of the road that are down below a ditch or just out of the line of sight, they're in dead space somewhere, they can jump in your car too. And that can cause you some serious problems because this may be the last time anybody ever sees you. Don't pick up hitchhikers. The next one is a fake injury. Fake injury is the guy, I'm sure you've seen it on a movie or, but, or heard about it. Um, this is where a person is struggling in a parking lot in some weird spot in a parking lot, even up front, it doesn't matter. They know nobody's gonna help. Or at least they know there's a very good chance that nobody's going to help. So help you when they snatch you and put you in the back of their car, or jam you in the trunk and slam it shut. Um, this is the person that, that he may even have his arm in a sling or have crutches under his arms, um, have a walking stick or a cane. And we all know what a cane is. It's a great weapon, right? But he's struggling to load his car. And I'm just going to use the, the pronoun him because most of these attackers, you know, of this kind are male. So you go up and you, you offer to help. Now, he's not asking you for help. You're offering. This is a con. They're, they're, they, they could be conning you into doing what they want you to do, but making you think it's your idea. Don't fall for it. You can, if you want to help, I get it. First place, do not approach that car. Do not get near that car. Either go on about your business and go to your car and go home walk with a purpose, walk like you mean it, or you can go get help in the store. You can, you can go get one of the cart guys to help or one of the, the personal shoppers, it doesn't matter. Some employee, somebody other than you should be doing this. Um, or, you know, you can help if you have someone with you. Because once again, let's say it's a, it's a, a lady, you know, that that doesn't look like she's any kind of threat to you. She may not be. Now you go out there and you, you go and get the big thing out of the cart and you put it here toward the back of the SUV or over the trunk. And then the guy that you didn't even see because you're focused on helping shoves you in. The guy that's coming from behind you shoves you in the car. They get in. They drive away. You may never be seen again. So that's a easy way to abduct somebody the next one is the good samaritan this is the opposite so this is a guy or you know, guy or whatever that's that offers to help you that comes up and goes um let me let me help you load this into your car or ask you if they can i help you load this in your car no you cannot and if they they insist guess what that's another red flag. If they insist after you say no, that's a problem. Because no isn't the beginning of a negotiation, okay? No is a decision that you've made. If they're not willing to accept that decision, there may be a problem. The answer is no, you don't want their help. Because once again, the same thing. They come up, they have access to your car, they're loading your car, they can push of you in, and drive away in your car with you. Um, the next one, the Good Samaritan. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I already did the Good Samaritan. I can't hear you. That's exactly what it sounds like. You're walking through a parking lot of a major retail store, um, and somebody says, hey, how you doing, or whatever, and you say something or you answer, they ask you a question, ask you for directions, something like that. And you try to answer, you know, oh, it's just across the street. And they're like, I can't hear you. I, I have bad hearing or whatever. Can you please come closer? Okay, that's great. You come closer and let's say that this is a, a car and it's parked next to a van or an SUV or a pickup truck or something like that. Well, 
that they get you next to be between those two cars, a person comes up behind you and shoves you in a car and you're gone. Or the side door opens on the van and they have you snatched up. It takes about two seconds. I know we've done it um, with some, some different training and um, from, of some different groups that I've worked with. And we did it in the military too. Um, just, just as part of a training exercise, see how long it really takes for somebody to snatch you into a minivan. Seriously. With, with very little training, somebody could do it in two seconds. If somebody practiced it, probably even faster. And either way, you're gone. Okay, the seventh one. Babysitters, dog sitters, house sitters, you name the sitter. People will boycott a brand because they did the research and they research for hours trying to find out where this uh, company donates their money and then they boycott that brand. Okay, great. Awesome. I, I support that and I really support doing research. But these same people sometimes will get their babysitter's name off of Craigslist or a house sitter or a dog sitter or somebody else, some other service technician that they're going to invite into their home. They'll get them off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever. You you name the, the outlet. It happens. And then they don't do any research and they're like, yeah, man, this is a great deal. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and take that because this guy is going to do it for half as much as everybody else was. So, and then they don't check any, any resources. They don't check any references. They don't, and this person may be insured. So what? Insurance does you no good if this person has stolen all your stuff and the insurance was just a, something that he printed out from the, ABC insurance company. None of that means anything. And especially when you're talking about your most prized possessions, your your most vulnerable family members, babysitters come to mind. Um, or somebody that you're you're leaving and you're hiring somebody to come do some some elder care for you because you're going out or you have to go out of town on business and you're um you're your elders are still living with you or something like that. And you just want to get a sitter and I, I get it. You do. Uh, my mother-in-law used uh, <clears throat> visiting angels, but <clears throat> somebody checked their references, check this person out before they let that person alone with my mother-in-law. So that's great. Um, but do the research. Don't, don't just trust somebody because they have a, Facebook marketplace ad and maybe even some fake references. I mean, heck, you, these people work together sometimes. These aren't just solo operators all the time. Two or three of them work together. So make sure that you verify the references before you actually pull the trigger and hire somebody to come and take care of your home or take care of your children, take care of your dogs, take care of your elders, anything. Now, I'm going to close by saying that I talk a lot about instinct and I talk a lot about intuition and I talk a lot about situational awareness and I know it gets repetitive. I get it. Um, that's because these are the things that are so important. This is all your, your limbic system. It's, it's what your brain is made to do that, that portion of your brain, the central part, it, it it is your instinct. And the one thing that you can trust about your instinct and your intuition, which are both basically the same thing, doing the same job, is that they are acting in your best interest 100% of the time. Never is it working against you. The other little voice in your head that's telling you, oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, that... That guy standing over there is just probably taking his AK-47 for a walk. That guy is trying to, he's your logic. And your logic is trying to complete a task. It doesn't care about the risk. It only cares about getting the task done. So trust your intuition 100% of the time. It always is your brain 
trying to keep its host alive. That's you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask, uh, just to put this into perspective, I know that we have a lot, a lot of LEOs and retired LEOs and that, uh, that have been commenting, and I really do appreciate you guys' input um, because you guys have you guys had whole careers doing this. Um, I'm going to ask you, how many times have you heard from a victim, <clears throat> I knew something was off about this situation, or I knew something was off about that guy. I knew something was wrong, and they still became a victim because they walked right into that situation. So if you could put that in the comments and share your experiences and, and things that, that you know. And also, for non-law enforcement officers, if this has happened to you, if you've not trusted your intuition and moved into something, that, an area that you knew was wrong, and we do it. It happens. I get it. Um. I'm not mad at you for it. I'm not, I'm not going to degrade you for it. I just want you to pay attention to what's going on around you, and I want you to trust that gut feeling. Okay, that's all I got. And once again, if you get the thumbs up and make a comment on this video, I would really appreciate it. And that's all for now. Thank you.